Hey guys, VGNT here again with another build video. This is going to be the Magicka Sorcerer. Um, I'm not claiming this to be like OP or meta or any sort of good stuff like that, but basically this is what I've been cutting around with in Cyrodiil lately. Okay, I've been getting a lot of whispers, people asking me what I'm running and how am I still making Magsork work. Okay, I'm not the only one out there, there's a vet, there's a quite a few very good mag sorks out there at the moment still rocking it but i do believe it's a lot harder to play nowadays in this meta in this heavy armor meta um but it is still working but it just does require a little bit more skill to play i personally think <clears throat> so let's get straight into the gear okay gear I'm running the lich named destro okay i am running lich on both bars Okay, because I want to keep, I want to get that proc up. You don't have to. Um, if you have an asylum, uh, Destro, that would probably be best in the slot. Okay, but I don't, so I'm using this. Lich Resto, Lich Head, Amber Plasm Five Piece on the body. One Infernal Guardian. Okay, you want to use one Dumber House, but I can't be asked to keep swapping it between my characters, so I'm just using the Infernal Guardian. All in pen, okay. Uh, that's what infused, but ideally you want all in pen. And then Lich jewelry of all spell damage on. Okay, like I said, nothing extraordinary. You can swap out the amber plasm uh, for shackle breaker. You just lose a slight little bit of regen, but then you win a little bit more max stat. Okay, and you lose a little bit of crit, but. Um, to be honest with you, the difference between Amber Plasm and, and Shackle Break isn't that great, to be honest. So if you don't have Amber Plasm, you could just crack on and use Shackle Breaker, which is this set right. here. Okay. Right, as for the skills, uh, oh, we'll do the champion points. That's where it. Okay, like I say, champion points every time. It's player specific. Okay, you use what you want to use. Okay. My setup won't work for you, and likewise, okay? This is how I like my CP, this is what works for me, okay? I have played around with the CP a lot to get it where I want it to be, um, and I'm happy with it. Let's go back into skills then. Okay, so we're going hard on ward, on his magic, healing ward, so there's his three shields. Okay, again, the rotation with this should be in that order, okay, hard and harness, healing ward, okay. If you're applying healing ward first, that's gonna be the first one taken away, therefore you get the less heal, okay? So you want to go hard and harness, healing. We're gonna go street, this is gonna be our mobility, getting around, getting away from these zergs. Okay, stretch density is gonna be our spell power buff, okay, and our empowerment. Ice comet on the back bar just to boost the max magic, plus it does work in group play, you know. You drop this when you're in a little small stacked up area. Keep them it, keep them within it, and it is melting people down. Okay, and it still is capable of the one shots. Okay, just on people that just don't know how to block. Front bar, crystal fragments, Hunding's curse, crushing shock. Okay, I am going to swap the crushing shock for force pulse for more damage. Okay, the interrupt just doesn't seem that useful anymore. Okay, so I definitely 100% recommend going Force Pulse over Crushing Shock. The extra damage weave is um, a lot more useful and puts a lot more pressure on the enemy. As we are not using Flame Reach, okay, I would go for the Force Pulse just for the extra damage, okay? This is a lot cheaper than Flame Reach, okay? Um, and it just feels a lot smoother to play with this. I feel like I don't need Flame Reach as I'm using Dawnbreaker. Um, as a CC, and I've also got Streak as a CC. I just don't feel like I need Flame Reach. I feel like Flame Reach slows my gameplay down, and just it's just really clunky for me. I just I'm not a really big fan of it. Okay, Endless Fury. Okay, this is our Execute, and then Inner Light on the front bar. Okay, and then we're going Dawnbreaker or Smite. Okay, a Dawnbreaker for me personally is it's pretty much a must to be honest because. You know, it, it's a, you've always got it up. Hits like a, hits like a truck. Um, and again, it's sea season. So if you drop a Dawnbreaker, drop an Insta Frag, drop an Endless Fury, bam! Most people are, de are dead within, within that combination. Okay, 
we are using um two more so I only have one left. Uh try food, okay. Using try food. My aim was to make a build I can use try food and not use dark conversion, okay? Because I am, I just, I just want to go back to the the old school ways of playing magic sword fluently, um, and with some actual skill instead of mindlessly destroying all magic and then just doing some dark conversions, okay? So we're using try food, and then we're using try pots, okay? For me, try pots are best in slot again because I love it for the stand management and all that sort of good stuff but you can use like a movable pot okay movable pots are pretty much just as equally as good to be honest because if you're not eating CC you're not using your stamp pool okay but yeah it's down to personal preference um, try pots or uh, movable pots it's all down to you basically uh, I have been using these bad lads at the moment because I've like got one left and I've got none left so basically that is my mag sort build okay um, a lot of people have been asking um, for what I've been running because they just don't understand how Magsork's still doing so well. Um, it does require a lot of practice um, in this current meta to get good with the Magsork. Um, as you can tell the difference when you bump into a Magsork that just doesn't have a good clue and he insta dies instantly. Okay, and then you find the difference when you bump into actually a Magsork who knows how to handle the class. Okay, and that's it. From VG Hunty, please subscribe um, and thanks for watching.